What's up, everybody? I'm Derek Gamer. Welcome back to the channel today. Today, we're back to Monster on the Rise. And today, I am going to teach you how to correctly build your character. I'm going to be going over armor, weapons, decorations, and strategy in order to make sure you maintain your main DPS because that's what I do. I have a ton of videos on the channel around builds from Monster Hunter, all Monster Hunter games whether it's world or this one so make sure you check those out as well at the end of this video make sure you stick around because i'm going to make a full build with high rank armor to kind of give you the philosophy of how i put everything together to do some juicy damage some juicy numbers so my family if you're new make sure you guys subscribe give the video a thumbs up without further ado let's dive in first thing you gotta decide which weapon you're gonna be using so for me i always use melee weapons i love melee combat i've been playing it since i was a child and you can do range as well that's why monster hunter is amazing there's weapons for every single person every single type of weapon you found first thing is identifying what weapon works for you so one go into the training area because there's one weapon of each type and try every single weapon out is what i recommend try them all out see which one feels good to you for me my story didn't start with longsword i started my first playthrough i did dual blades then i went to i did switch axe and i did charge blade then i did great sword then i did longsword and i switched back to dual blades i finally spent some time and started playing the game more and more and more then longsword was like where i was at because i've always played katanas and 99% of the games I've played, so it worked out very well for me. So starting off, after you decide what weapon you want to use, range or close, and also to this range, just close range, just far range, and you start up a longsword. So from this screen right here, there's a lot of things to take in on the right hand side. If you hit the R3 button in, it'll tell you the skills are on it, and it kind of give you a breakdown of what everything does. So on the right hand side of the screen, you have a couple of things. You have name of the weapon, you have rarity, you have attack, you have sharpness, element, affinity, damage bonus, and slots. So a lot of you guys are new. You're like, wow, there's so much to take in. Don't worry. And that's why we're here. I'm going to break everything down for you guys so you can understand. I'm only going to make a high rank weapon. That way you, I don't want to show too much, but also just enough so you can kind of get an idea of what to look for. That way you can start playing around with decorations and such. So there's... There's two, there's two, there's two paths you can go on. There's raw damage, then there's elemental damage. So in this game, elemental damage is beneficial for weapons that attack more frequently. When I say more frequently, I mean like dual blades. So dual blades attack, 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 attack. The attacking frequency is a lot higher, so you apply more element. Because the way it works is, if I go over here to an element, it tells you how much element you have. I have 13, 16 thunder on this weapon. Meaning with not even every hit, every other hit, it feels like you apply some thunder element. Once you apply enough thunder element, I mean, every single hit you do thunder damage. So the thunder damage is based on the monster's resistance as well. And I guess I'll go into that real quick. So if you go over here to your hunting log, look up large monsters. As you go through, the more you fight them, the more you learn about them. It tells you what they're strong and what they're weak against. So it tells you if you hit their head, the higher the number, the better. If you hit the head, you get... 80% damage and torso 45, the four leg is 50, the tail is 55, the tail tip is 75. That's why a lot of times slicing weapons like long sword, great sword, they always favor the head, I mean the tail, then the head because you can cut it off and allowing you to, the monster to do less damage. You can farm the pieces, then you go to the head. You want to avoid the areas that have like low numbers like this in the middle because that's where you're not going to do as much damage. So element, same thing. So I go over here and look at the element. I see that fire is not that weak against fire. It's weaker against uh, has 20 and 25 against water and thunder. So if I'm going to fight this monster with an elemental weapon. I want to one. I'm going to use a water weapon or a thunder weapon. I'm not going to use a dragon because the dragon is weak against it. So you're not going to get that much damage from it. So this is where you kind of go down your monsters when you start identifying. Hey, I want to make an elemental weapon. Cool. What monsters are going to be weak against that element? So right now, those two, water would be good against those two. Thunder is better here. If you look at fire is better, this weapon. So I'll make a fire weapon for you. And as I go down, water is okay. It looks like water. It's like the okay standard, except for this monster. So this one, 20 for fire. And that's how you kind of go. So for me, I like the raw damage because it tells you, essentially, the only thing I care about is the first number. How much damage will I do when I slice it versus the blunt damage? So blunt weapons like hammer they can't break pieces but they like break the armor parts so it tells you how much damage would you do to different body parts so basically your weapon is this kind of a this is a kind of a tree that tells you hey 
I'm using a longsword, then I should be focused on the body parts that do this damage. In my last video, I showed you the yellow versus the white. If I hit these parts with a higher number, I'm going to get the yellow number. So I want to stay away from the parts with the, low, like the four legs. I'll get weak damage points. It's not going to be a weak spot. So spend some time in here. And if it go along as well, it tells you on the next page, hey, this monster is very, very weak against poison because it has the three stars in it. And we get a strong against it. Once three stars is better, one star is worse. So it tells you, hey, what elemental resistance for per, per monster. So you can start identifying what monsters you want to farm with whatever weapon piece you're farming at the moment. Last piece here, this is going to tell you exactly what you get when you break the monster. So you're farming for your materials, right? Damn, I need to find Imperial Beak. Who has Imperial Beak? You come over here, it tells you, hey, if you break specific target parts, it will, you have a higher chance, a lower chance of getting that parts you're looking for. So I'm looking for the beak. I go down here and it tells me, oh, that's what you need right there. You need to break, I have a 75% chance of broken rewards if I want an Imperial Break. So that's kind of how you go about it and writing skills as well. So this is where you'll start as you start to identify. If you're going to go to elemental route, you want to start here. So let's know what element is the most bang for your buck. Or if you're going to go to raw route, just need to know where to hit the monster. And a lot of times you can learn by fighting the monster in the moment. So going back, we got that philosophy out the way now. So now let's go back to the actual weapon. So starting off, this weapon is a it has no element on it. And for me, I like doing raw. So it's going to be a raw focus. I'll show elements as well. So if you look at this, it has green, purple, it has, it has red sharpness, orange sharpness, yellow sharpness, and green sharpness. The way sharpness works is sharpness is essentially <clears throat> your, how much damage output you're doing at a certain level. And once you get to like yellow and green at certain parts in the monster, if it's too strong, you'll bounce off of it. That's why it's important for you to resharpen your, your weapon. So you can maintain the highest possible sharpness you can go. So as the levels go higher, you get de different damage bonuses. And I have a chart that should be up on screen right now. And essentially, if you're in red, your damage multiplier is 0.5, orange 0.75, yellow 1.1.0, 1 .1. green 1.5, blue 1.20, white 1.32, and purple 1.39. And you can't get purple until you get the sun break or an iceborne or the expansion. So the highest you guys can go right now is white. So your damage multiplied by 1.32. So the goal is, how do you maintain that sharpness? Because you want to maintain that damage multiplier. So that's where you're going to spend a lot of your time focused when you're making your builds. So now let's go into how to actually do it. So moving along as well. So sharpness, maintaining your sharpness, sharpening your monster, your weapon a lot, jumping on your paddling move in the middle of battle sharpness, because that's how you can maintain your damage uptime. Element, we talked about element already in case of what you want to focus on. Attack, the higher the attack, the better. That's pretty straightforward. Affinity, what does affinity mean? Affinity is your chance to crit on every single hit. So right now, you are going to look at this weapon gives me zero affinity. And if you're going to notice as you go on, sometimes weapons start to give you affinity. So let's see if I can find one. So this one's negative affinity. So every time I hit, I have a negative chance of hitting, getting a critical hit, which means I'm already... You don't want to go that route unless you're going for a specific build. So this weapon, for example, it comes with innately 5% affinity. 5% affinity means that 5% of the time when I hit a monster on each strike, I have 5% chance of getting a critical hit. Critical hit is increase of, I believe, like 30% on damage. So you want to get your critical hits. So we'll talk about that when we get to decoration in terms of building for affinity versus building for attack. But for now, just know for now, we're just teaching you. I'm just teaching you how to read the weapons to identify which weapon is good because there's so many and you want to identify which one should I focus on. There's so many options and yes, you can play every weapon is good. But if you want to start optimizing mid maxing your build, it's important for you to know the definition of some of these attributes. So now defensive bonus, don't really worry about defense, but no one really cares if it has points. Good. If it doesn't cool. Like this one's 30. I'm not going to use this weapon just because it gives me a done defense bonus. I will use this weapon if it gives me high attack compared to all the other ranking weapons. So right, right now, rarity one weapon. What's the best rarity one weapon? Rarity two. Are there better rarity two weapons? So let's compare. This one gives me 150 attack and zero affinity green sharpness. This one has a touch of blue sharpness, 100 attack and 5% affinity. So if I'm critting more, I'm doing more damage. Crit is always going to be better than just raw attack. You always want to make sure you're critting. 
So then last slot is going to be our slottage. <clears throat> our slottage is when you can put decorations on your weapons and each piece of weapon or armor has an opportunity to give you an option to increase, to add a decoration. You add a decoration on there, it gives your, your hunter more power based on what decoration you added to your set. So now we are looked at the weapons. We looked at how to identify which one is good. And we know all the attributes now. So now we're going to start identifying a weapon. So let's see, let's pick a rarity three. So I think high ranks rarity three. So I go over here, I'm looking for rarity three weapon. I'm gonna start from the top. I say, okay, this one is 120 thunder attack. Do I want thunder? The, the sharpness is green, not that great, no affinity. Uh, negative 20. At this point in the game, I don't have a way to, to remedy that affinity negative. So I'm not gonna use this one, even though it has a higher attack. I wanna crit more. Going down, keen edge, 140, blue sharpness. Okay, okay, this one is not bad. This one's not bad. This one, 120, 10% affinity, not bad. And I think, is it already three? Well, anyways, and so this one will be a good one. 120, 30% affinity. So it's gonna help me a lot with my affinity to make sure I'm critting, because the goal is to get at least 80%. On 80% of your hits, you crit. That's a safe spot. If you can get 100, get 100. There's ways to get that, but 80% is a good place to start. So now you look at this, cool. These are how you read the weapons. So now let's go to the armor. So essentially someone asked a question of how do I make my armor, my weapon? What you have to do is you have to have them acquire materials. You get this one, you forge it, yes, whatever. Don't equip it now and you know, it tells you what you need to make it. Upgrade, no, and then say, I can go on multiple paths. Do I want to make it on? Do I want to keep going down this path to get this weapon? Or do I want to start taking it this way to get an elemental ice weapon? Or do I want to take it this way to get this weapon? So you depend on what you want to do, what weapon you want to go after. That's where you, this is the, the turning point where you pick which weapon you want to go. So that's how you decide which tree to go. So moving along for arm for So this, what I just explained works well for great sword, long sword, dual blades, sword and shield, lance, gun lance. All the really and hammer to hammer depending on your decorations you put on your armor that tells you that they will each benefit different weapons differently. And I'll talk about that later. But for all the other weapons, you have to worry about sharp sharpness with the range weapons. You just gotta worry about making your ammo and having them ammo on the fly to make sure you can sustain the rest of your fight, which is a whole nother journey. So if you're looking for range stuff, that's gonna be for I'll kind of type gently touch on it, but most of my Gameplay, my builds are gonna be focused on melee weapons. So armor, 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 armor. Armor is where it gets really, really fun. So you're looking at the armor. Same thing applies. Rarity tells you defense, whatever. No one cares about defense. Just increase as high as you can. When you look at the armor pieces, as you get later, later in the game, you want the most important thing you want to look at is what skills come on the armor piece on the on the right hand side, and how much slottage do you get? Slottage means how many slots available. So this one gives me one slot, one piece decoration, one piece, two slot decoration. The higher the slottage on the decoration, generally, the better the decoration is gonna be in order to make your stuff even better. So two slots, one slot, one slot, one slot. So I start going, when I get new armors, first thing I go is look at what skills do I get? Do I get any attacking skills? Or do I get support skills, healing skills? And then I identify how, what slottage. Is the slottage good? I might, I can make some things happen. So then so every weapon has armor piece has a built in skills on it. If you go over here, it will show you all the skills. And if you press R3, it will kind of go through and tell you all the skills that it has on it. And it'll give you a brief definition. If you notice, skills has level one, level two, level three. And then on the right hand side, it tells you what level the skill can go up to. And that's where you can identify, hey, if I put, if I put more decorations of the same type on an armor piece, I get greater bonus. So this one has a critical eye. For example, it goes all the way to level seven and has gives you 40% affinity if you go all the way to level seven. So essentially, if I have level seven on my armor piece, every single time I hit a monster, I have a 40% chance of getting affinity, of getting a critical strike. And if you go back to your weapon, if I equip the weapon with 5% affinity, that means I have 45% because everything stacks together. 45% affinity chance of creating on that enemy. And that's how you and now you can kind of see how things are kind of coming together when you're trying to make your builds. So now going into this, let's you know, identify what skills are most important for me. So just looking through all the skills, just go through, read the definitions, 
read them does that make sense for me so i when i get to decoration i go over every skill so you can kind of get an idea of what makes sense for what weapon so sharpens we talked about sharpens earlier why do i want sharpens more on my weapon because it gives me more damage if i go into the higher tier or it can help me sustain damage if i pick a weapon that has a little bit of sharpness and i extend that that means instead of me getting 10 hits before it goes from white to blue i can get 20 hits from it from white to blue so now it's a matter of like the more hits i do with more damage the more damage i do overall i know it's a lot but i'm trying to break it down as much as possible if you need to rewind and look at something again go ahead and also too there's tons of videos that explains every single concept i just want this to be an all-encompassing video to educate you guys on how to build your character correctly so quick sheet as well there's no training area for you to try the builds the decorations before you buy them you must farm them in order to get the materials so how do you get the armor pieces you just you just have to farm the monsters so high quality felt fight enough of these monsters make sure that's why i say in my guide video pick up every single thing you see every time you see a gathering point gatherer you see an enemy just dest destroy farmers pieces because you need it in order to get make more armor pieces that's why it's important so that's why you want to farm everything you see and pick up everything you see as well so just going along like i said earlier we'll just look at slottage and identify which slot is which weapon armor piece has a good amount of slottage and then what skills does it come on skills will take priority unless when you get later game with some stuff or when you get so much good slots that you can just put whatever skill you want based on the decoration then you can go that route but early game you really want your armor piece to have the skill that you're looking for you don't get a lot of good decoration so like later later on in the game so now it comes to decoration so decoration decoration this is where the game truly expands because decorations allow you to take your your bills to the next level protect yourself in battle give you more health a lot of things basically if you want to have a comfy build meaning like you have some a good amount of attacking power good defense good support skills or if you want to go just straight raw dps and do straight just damage and be a glass cannon meaning that you could do a lot of damage but don't get hit because if you do you might get ko'd or you might lose a majority of your health based on each attack that comes your way so as you start going up the the, the art of the decorations they come in different tiers so based on one star like i was saying is going to be the weaker ones two stars going to be really good three stars going to be real good but the problem is you're gonna have to find an armor piece that has a three slot decoration slot available if not you're not gonna be able to equip the decoration so with that being said we'll go through them so level one thunder resistance what it does increase the thunder resistance improves defense at a higher level so i mean this is telling you if you go level three you'll get even more and if you look in the middle it tells you what the maximum level is so based on the blue square that's filled in out of the three there's three levels available for this skill and right now we're at level one. So if you look on the right hand side, it tells you thunder resistance increase 20 points and you get a defense increase of 10 points by having level three on your armor piece. Why would I put this on my armor piece? If I was going against a monster that was very high thunder attacks, I'm getting killed. So I wanna put my thunder resistance up. So I just start going through leap of faith, fortify, increases your, your for, um, if you if you knock out or you die in battle you increase your attack by 10 percent defense by 50 percent this is good earlier on you find yourself dying a lot you can put that one on there there's also like farming sets so this is really good when you make a different item loadout meaning that you want to create one armor piece for arm battles then say you're looking you're doing expeditions you want to farm materials you put an armor piece with scales like this one on it this one's great because it allows you to gather one more extra from a bone pile or you want to max level three, meaning when you're out farming for materials, you can pick up, pick up, pick up, pick up multiple times, meaning you make sure farming runs a lot more efficient. This one, same thing as well, consume more herbs, anti-blast, blast resistance, sleep resist, paralysis resist, all the resists are essentially the same thing. You put it on because you're trying to negate the fact that you're filling it with the specific monster you're fighting. As we start moving on along for ice attack, you start getting into attack increases so now this is where i was talking about elemental skills if i'm making an elemental weapon majority nine times out of ten you're gonna want to get level five what is it level yeah level five on your element because for example ice attacks increase by 20 percent and an increase of four percent for damage and it tells you when you get to this is important you must at least get to level three 
because at level three you get a percentage a percentage is always going to be better than just raw plus raw stat numbers so moving along dragon attacks all fall the same formula as well once you understand one it kind of works to all the rest of them defense boost decreases your defense as you go higher and higher you get more defense the goal for me is just, just work on your counters and your dodging carbon pro prevents you from getting knocked back while you're carving so you should only be carving when the monster's gone or after the hunt so you shouldn't have to worry about carving in the middle of the battle so you shouldn't need this one so as you kind of go through you start getting some ideas for me i want to kind of specialize on some of the more attacking skills so a lot of these are all good you can kind of look at it. they're all like niche case based on the weapon you're using or what kind of build you're trying to run we start getting a little further in like wire bugs whisper increases the wire increases your duration of a wire by 30 percent increases wire fall recovery rate also increases the passive recovery rate while on the ground so outside of using your ability you want to get your ability faster you might put wire bug on your on your armor sheet quick sheet quick sheets one i recommend if you lose long sword you must have level three because it allows you to greatly increase your sheeting speed, which increases your counter ability, which increases your overall DPS. So we want to make sure you have level three on every single longsword build. No if, ands, or buts. It's also good for grace. Well, not really it's for old new style grace sword because new style grace swords are really just using raging combo and moving across the map. You're not ever sheeting really. If you're using quick sheet on a grace sword, if you are using it with old school. TSC play style, but those we're gonna try a new style out since you're playing on rice. So moving along, skills that really make for builds like magazines really good for your range of weapons. They get to like attack boost and expert jewel. These are the bread and butters of longsword attack boost, expert jewel, tenderizer, and critical jewel. So I'll go backwards. So attack jewel, what does it do? Increases your raw attack. Every skill, every armor weapon. Can utilize this because the more attack the better if you get to level four it turns into a percentage five percent attack then you want to maximize level seven go as high as you can at least level four so you can get that five percent percentage increase so that you can get your damage but more importantly make sure you can get your affinity so you want to make sure you're critting yeah at least 80 percent crit so get as high as levels you can with your affinity and that's why you would focus on the expert jewel moving along probably the two most important decorations in the game for majority of builds is going to be weakness exploit and critical jewel weakness that's what does it do attacks that hit weak spots have an increased 15 percent affinity meaning that if i hit the weak spot like a head or tail where i get that yellow number i automatically get 15 percent increased affinity meaning if i have 40 percent affinity right now on my armor piece by me focusing on, on hitting only the weak spots i naturally have 55 percent affinity just like that and this one's really good. You have level three of it. You naturally get 50% infinity by hitting the weak spot. So my armor piece has 40% based on my decorations affinity. I now hit a weak spot. I get 50%. So every single time I hit a weak spot, that's 90%, 90%, 90%. So at that point, you don't necessarily need any more decoration because you are kind of over the threshold. The higher the infinity is better. But if once you get to 80, 90, is good but then you might as well put the extra in attack critical jewel what does critical do or what does it do it works hand in tandem with and on crit eye and tenderizer jewel increases the damage dealt by critical hits by 30 percent 35 percent and 40 percent so you, as you're following the most important thing is getting your critical hits as high as you can every single time you get that 90 percent critical nine critical 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 that damage is increased by 40% based on your overall attack. That's why it's important to have high, as high attack as you possibly can, but most importantly, get your critical up. Get your critical up, get your get your affinity up, get your crit rate up, then focus on your attack so you can just multiply your damage exponentially. Then there's a bunch of other skills on here that are more niche, like flawless, increases your attack when your, your HP is full. It's kind of hard to do in base game when you don't really have that many opportunities to keep your help, your HP, at max like you did in monster Hunter world what or iceborne with what was it health region so that was not too value added this time also other skills that are really really popular back in the day and not really added value added this time around will be like agitator 
Agitator is good because, where is it? It's great because it, it would essentially increase your attack and affinity. The problem is there's no way to keep the uptime 100% like there was in World. In World, you can jump on a monster, spin it around three times, Iceborne, and it automatically gets aggroed. This time around, you have to just wait for the monster to get aggro. There's a skill in some break that allows the monster to get aggro a little bit more often, but it's not worth it. So Agitator is like one of those, like I have nothing else to put in and I want to get a little bit more DPS, I will put Agitator on my character. <sighs> Lastly, there's level four decorate, level three decorations. These are great for what they do, but they're more requirements. You need an armor piece with level three decoration slot in order to make it happen. And they're kind of expensive. So you would want to have an armor piece with a handicraft on it versus going decoration route because the likelihood that you get an armor piece with a lot of level three slots is very low versus the opportunity of you getting an armor piece with, with handicraft on it is a little higher. Okay, so now I'm in a situation where I'm putting together an armor piece to, um, in order to make a build on the fly. So I got these pants on because one, they give me two attack on a level two slot. So I need a chest. I put this one because you're going to quick sheet, max on my. And quick sheet is very important. So if I didn't have quick sheet, I would necessarily I would need to get it by through my armor. Arm piece I can put on this one gives you maximum mind crit sheet. Let's see if I have a better one. But I want to keep, to keep it low. So that's probably gonna be my best one to use right now. Head crit draw I don't necessarily need for my build. Quick draw what it does is when you draw your weapon, it automatically makes your attacks crit. So uh, let me go for a low rank for this one. Let's see what I got here. Now this will work. I used this one pretty earlier on. I kept it for a little while. Attack boost, any slottage on here. A lot of these aren't gonna have that many slots earlier on, but this one at least gives me attack boost. So I'll put that one on for my waist. Anginot, look at the slottage on that one. In case you have Anginot yet. This one's good, quick sheet and level three. Okay, that'll work, that'll work. And I think I have my legs already equipped. So I have everything I need now. So now I'm moving along. I can go over to this, changes over. So right now I have attack boost, high, crit sheet, maximum eye, and critical eye. So right now, earlier on, it's kind of difficult to get crit critical eye. So essentially, I want to fill everything in I can with decorations. So I go over here, set decorations. Which arm piece is going to have decorations? One, two, level three, level three, level two, level two, level two. Cool. So I put this over and say, cool, my quick sheet's taken care of. That's like my bread and butter. I must have quick sheet three on my build. Next, I already have a high attack based on the armor pieces I put on. So now the most important thing to do is get my critical high. If you look over, if I look over right now, my affinity is, what is it? My affinity is 20%. 20% of my attacks with all, everything I got going on right now. 20% of the time I, I, I crit when I hit. So now I'm, I want to get that a little higher. So I'm gonna go over here, set decoration. So now I have crit. I can, if I want to crit a little higher, I can do a couple of things. If I do a weakness exploit, I will do that. My tenderizer, put tenderizer on there. So now I have 20%, but when I crit, I get 15%. So now I have 35% crit and you can go as high as you can. If you have tenderizer, you put all tenderizers on. Tenderizer you get a little later on. So for you guys earlier on, you might just be able to use like critical eye. So critical eye, I would put down there. Critical eye. And also I have early build, build videos as well that you guys should check out if you need some help on building your characters. I have them linked on my last video in the comment section. So put that in there. Critical eye is going up. Also cool, maximum might is cool because maximum might when you're not Attacking when well, you're not consuming stamina, your infinity increases by 10% and 20% for two levels. So with longsword, when you're attacking, you don't maintain, you don't gain stamina like you do a dual blade. So maximum amount works on longsword, might not be great on dual blades. So moving along here, essentially I was just gonna put expert on there because that's all I have. Now, how much sharpness does this weapon have? It has a little bit of blue, I'll take a touch white. So, hey, maybe I might even put this expert, this handicraft jewel. If I don't put this handicraft jewel, I can put any other jewel on there as well. Razor sharp is cool because it allows me to prevent your weapon from losing sharpness 10% of the time. Or there's the sharp jewel. It lasts 30% of the time. Weapon sharpness does not decrease for a set amount of time. So I sharpen my weapon and for 30 seconds, I won't lose any sharpness. So the, the, the more, 
The more the story is, you want to go through and read all the decorations that come up and identify, hmm, does this make sense for my weapon? If it does, try it out. If it doesn't, then switch, keep on switching it. So I'm going to do handicraft. Now I'm stuck with critical eye. Let's see. Do I have any more? Expert. And I farmed a lot because this is my PC account. I had, I had a lot of decorations I had to leave on my X switch account. It was all good. So now we're here. And then we have spots on level ones. Bang for buck level one, I would say is free meal. So you don't burn through all your heals because what free meal does is it gives you a predetermined chance of consuming a food or drink item for free. So 10% of the time you get used free. Second level two, 25 and level three, 45% of the time you got you, you gobble down some health potions. You don't consume it and you get to keep it. So free meal is probably one of the better skills to use earlier on as to you learning the monsters and all the things. Then after free meal, you would use like stun resist is another good one because it helps you from losing your stun. Also grinder if you want for sharpening, but you just jump on your paddle and sharpen whatever you want. And if not, defense is whatever. There aren't that many amazing level one decoration skills. So that's why I always use free meal, stun resist, or at the last grinder. Well, this is the build. So I'm walking away. So 40% of the time I hit, I crit on my 175 attack and I'm going to battle like this. You can use there's comfy skills on there like defense or another one that's really comfy. Probably just defense because every other skill is a level two. And if it's a level two, then you have better skills you can use decoration, you can use like attack or critical eye. So this is how I would go about building your character. Just philosophy around it, what you want to do. And essentially you look at your armor, you look at your weapon. First look at the, get to the weapon based on attack and sharpness to, ref, to reflect how much affinity is giving you. And if you are happy with that, then you build around that weapon. This weapon needs a little more power, put attack. It needs a little bit more affinity. Get your critical, your expert jewel on there. If it needs sharpness, do that. If not, you want to maintain sharpness, use razor or sharp jewels to make sure you maintain your sharpness. Probably sharp is better because you can just sharpen and you won't lose your DPS for 30 seconds or one minute. Then at that point, you just put the armor pieces together and you fill it in with any decorations you have. And you just keep on farming monsters till you can get the all, to all decorations you want to make the ultimate build that you want to make in the moment. So for all the people that want to min max, this was a guide to kind of help you do that. And for people that just want you to just have fun, everything is you don't necessarily need these builds in order to beat the game. Because a lot of time you can beat them get monsters by just trial and error. It might take you a little longer, but you'll get there. So you don't don't feel like you have to min max if you don't want to. This video was just intended to kind of give you the, the foundation in order to how to build a character. And so how to start identifying if a decoration is good fit for your armor. Because every decoration is good. It just might not be good for your armor piece in the moment. Cool? So thanks for watching. If you found a bit of value, we'll give the video a thumbs up, subscribe, share with people that are new to the game or want to learn more about min max and their builds. I have a tons of builds on the, on the channel. The builds I'm dropping next are going to be for Sunbreak because that's where I'm currently at right now because the title update four is about to come around. But thanks for watching. Stay smooth. Till next time, dear gamers, signing out.